Yo guys, this is the new M2 Max MacBook Pro. This is the 16 inch model with the 12 core CPU and 38 core GPU. From early tests, it looks to be insane. Uh, but also from early tests, I have some concerns about this nearly seven grand Mac Studio that I bought less than a year ago. Inside the Mac Studio is the M1 Ultra that has a 20 core CPU and 64 core GPU, which on paper is already way higher than the M2 Max. So why am I making this video? Why am I comparing Apple's highest end Apple Silicon to something in the middle? Let me show you what happened. And then for fun, because you know, this other stuff came out, we should probably compare it to the new M2 Pro Mac Mini and M2 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro as well. So I'm gonna be honest, I've got really, really high expectations for this computer. It took longer than we thought to come out and I am confused why the old wallpaper's on the box too. Again, pretty much seems like it was supposed to come out last year. Regardless, inside is where we've got the exact same design as last year. If we go ahead and put the plastic off, Look, it's a silver MacBook Pro. Now, I actually don't care that this looks the same because the design's great. It was just updated a year ago, but it is fundamentally the same computer as before. Never gets old. Inside, we've got the quick start materials, which will probably be as boring as ever, but the the color of the Apple stickers has changed. They're, they're black now. We got black Apple stickers, even though I bought the silver. Okay, cool, let's go, let's roll with it. As for the rest of the package, you're getting the cool 140 watt GAN, gallium nitrate adapter, which means they're packing a lot of power, lightweight design. And then, of course, you've got your MagSafe cord packed in here. And because I got silver, it's the white cable, but they are color match. Like if you get the space gray, it'll be a darker cable this time. Okay, let's set this computer up. It's already telling us hello. It looks beautiful. The screen is as incredible as it's ever looked, even though it's the same. I wanna pop in here, start downloading some stuff, and then we can have some fun. Five hours later. And it's definitely not five hours later now, but in that time, everything has gotten set up and I've prepped for the four big tests we're running today. Number one, the Xcode code compiling test. Number two, the video export test in Final Cut. Number three, an audio project balance in Logic Pro. And finally, a Photoshop batch export test of 30 raw photos. So we have a lot to jump into now. Let's start off first with the Xcode test. So I started off in Xcode and downloaded a couple of sample Swift projects online. I knew these were incredibly lightweight. They wouldn't take a super long time to build, but I wanted to see from clicking the button to when the app would run in the simulator, how long it would really take. And pretty much immediately, I was shocked to see that the M2 Max not only jumped ahead, but actually built the app faster than the M1 Ultra in my Mac Studio. While the M2 finished at just about 15 seconds, the M1 stopped at about 28 seconds. So I had to try this again. I went on to a second app that basically just needed to run. It had actually built earlier in the day, and I got the exact same looking result. I got about 14 seconds on the M2 Max and 19 seconds on the M1 Ultra. And as I opened a couple of my projects in Final Cut and started my testing here, I did start to see results that were more consistent with what I thought would be the case in this entire video. And after skipping to the end of the export time, you can see the M1 Ultra absolutely destroyed the M2 Max here, finishing at 28 seconds compared to 38 seconds on the M2 Max. So a 10 second jump. But considering that that test didn't require a whole lot of compression, I wanted to try the web hosting format, which is how I normally export my videos. And here, once again, Again, after I ran it, it took quite a bit longer, over four minutes on both, but this time the M1 Ultra finished just two seconds ahead of the M2 Max chip. Let me just say that again, the M1 Ultra finished two seconds ahead of the M2 Max. So I thought this might've been a fluke, so I ran the same video export again, and sure enough, I got the same order of results. The Max Studio won, but this time it only won by uh, one second. The Max Studio's M1 Ultra won by one second over the M2 Max. So indecipherable and discernible that you wouldn't be able to tell. So this is where things are weird, right? Like this Mac Studio, I was like, okay, it's, it should have been like a, a lot better, especially because it's more expensive and it doesn't come with a, a display, keyboard or mouse. Um, so, so I had to keep, I had to see what would happen next. So I wanted to give the Mac Studio a task that I thought it would be better at because it had a higher core count. And that is gonna be in the Logic Pro Test where we export the sample project, which is Lil Nas X's Montero. And starting off with the normal version, you can see that when we do this test, the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra, it does absolutely destroy the M2 Max, finishing in 23 seconds versus 36 on the M2 Max. 
X, which to note here is the biggest difference between these chips that we've seen so far. So that was the regular version, now we do the spatial audio version and we notice a similar trend. It finishing at 31 seconds on the M1 Ultra and 11 seconds later at 42 on the MacBook Pro's M2 Max. And if you're wondering why the Mac Studio was so much significantly better here, that's because the CPU is essentially the biggest thing that matters with audio processing, and it just has eight more cores to process audio with. You don't need the higher core count in the GPU for audio. So it did really well there. But there's one last test that I, I wanted to try because I, I was curious about Photoshop batch export. So I open up 30 raw photos that I've taken on my iPhone in recent months and want to do a batch export of both a JPEG Photoshop file and a TIFF lossless file all at the same time, running it on both machines. And right away, just like the very first test we did with Xcode, I noticed that the M2 Max jumps ahead. Not by a ton here in the first test, but definitely a noticeable amount. And sure enough, at the end of this, the M2 Max wins. With the M2 Max finishing at just three minutes and 11 seconds at the end, and the M1 Ultra about 30 seconds later at three minutes and 43 seconds. Which had me a bit perplexed, because if we tally up the results from every test we ran today, yes, overall, technically, the M1 Ultra in the Mac Studio won five of the eight, with the M2 Max winning only three. But as you saw, every win wasn't major for the Mac Studio. It was really only in the audio department that we saw a, a noticeable, tangible, worth it upgrade. If you're doing audio work, like the Mac Studio M1 Ultra highest spec is definitely the move here. And if you're wondering why this is the case specifically, you just head over to Geekbench and you'll notice the actual under the hood changes between the cores specifically in these chipsets. While the M1 Ultra, when you're using all of the cores together, it can generate a really impressive multi-core score. It turns out that the actual speed of the single core is a few hundred points slower than the M2 Max, which perfectly explains why the M2 Max was better at some tasks. Like, I want to wrap here by saying, holy sh**, dude. I wasn't expecting this. I don't know what I'm going to do with my Mac Studio. Maybe, am I going to, am I going to sell it? Like, I kind of feel like I should sell it. It, it's basically the same for the video work I do. Does anybody aside from audio engineers really need the Mac Studio? I mean, sure, you can find different niches where the higher core counts are going to be really helpful when you're just throwing 64 GPU cores or 20 CPU cores. But I also feel like for the widest breadth of users, the M2 Max is just like nuts. Like it's, it's more power than anyone needs. It's essentially as good in most tasks as the M1 Ultra chip. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very blown away by the performance of the M2 Max. I did not think it would be as big of a jump as it is. And um, I want to hear I want to hear your thoughts down below. Were you surprised? I wouldn't have believed you unless I tested it myself. I'd be like, nah. Okay, cool. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will catch you the next one. <laughs> Peace.